Hello, this is Michael Tracy, and this video is about an entry in the National Geographic book, The Call of Everest, written by none other than world-renowned climber, Conrad Anker. The entry starts on page 49 and is entitled, Summit Rocks. Interested viewers can get a copy of this book and read all about the unique composition of the summit of Mount Everest and the layer right beneath the summit, which Conrad Anker refers to as the thrombolite bed, making up about 200 vertical feet, starting at the foot of the third step. The unique nature of Everest Summit Rocks was pointed out in a video about Mallory and Irvin done by Emp Lemon, but in his graphic, it appears that the entire area above the yellow band is of the same consistency. However, as Conrad Anker points out in the book, this is not the case, and the various different types of rocks and fossils above the yellow band make for interesting and diverse geological samples. For the more academically minded, there is this article that is unfortunately behind a paywall, but it does reference some interesting research conducted on summit rocks by the Chinese, which for some strange reason was not able to be published prior to 1975. Thus, we are left with two Everest mysteries. Why was the 1999 team not told to search for summit rocks in Mallory's pockets? And why did it take the Chinese 15 years to publish their research about summit rocks on Mount Everest? For those paying attention, there's probably a correlation between these two great mysteries. The written instructions to the 1999 team make no mention of searching Mallory's pockets for summit rocks, and the initial search on May 1st did not even manage to find the watch in Mallory's pocket. Thus, I discount various allegations that the search was thorough or would have found summit rocks if they were there. If you can't find a watch, you can't dodge this issue.